For many, a Charlie Brown Christmas is the greatest holiday special of all time, but that also makes it very easy to take for granted. Since its first broadcast on December 9th, 1965, it has consistently aired on television networks every single year, at least until its acquisition by Apple TV in 2020. And while the annual tradition may not be significant to some, it sounds like an absolute miracle to those who know how troubled the original production of A Charlie Brown Christmas really was. The cartoon went $20,000 over budget, had inconsistent drawings, and was littered with animation errors, all to the point where director Bill Mendelez literally thought that they had ruined Charlie Brown. I've killed it. But in my opinion, A Charlie Brown Christmas didn't succeed in spite of these issues, rather it owes its entire success to them. Everything about the special, from the line work, to the voice acting, to the animation errors themselves, thematically resonate not just with the story of what Christmas is really all about, but the story of the entire Charlie Brown franchise as a whole. The imperfection is what makes a Charlie Brown Christmas work. If you're an animator and you've ever gone back to rewatch the current edition of A Charlie Brown Christmas, there are a lot of flaws that you may have noticed. Charlie Brown's hair never has a consistent shape, the sad little tree has different branches depending on the location, Lucy is literally clipping into her psychiatry booth, and that's not even counting all the other errors present in the original broadcast. As animator Bill Littlejohn once put it, the Peanuts characters were not designed for animation, which is true not just because of Charles Schultz's unique art style, but also because the kids' body proportions only allow for a specific range of motion. Where you would normally use 16 frames of drawings to animate the walk cycle of an average human, a Charlie Brown character with its short stubby legs would look like they're floating on that frame rate. So instead, their walk cycle has to consist of 6 frames, which makes the animation look choppier, which on top of everything else, must have made the animators feel even more frustrated. But as much as I understand why these self-respecting artists would feel dissatisfied with their work, I also believe that these imperfections are what make A Charlie Brown Christmas so endearing. The rough, inconsistent line work makes the special feel handmade, the amateur voice acting makes the characters sound like real kids, and all the scrappy, disjointed flaws tie directly into the thematic, unifying idea of the cartoon. A Charlie Brown Christmas is about finding comfort through imperfection. What finally gets the main protagonist in the holiday spirit isn't the stage play, it's the sad, pathetic little Christmas tree. And Linus's sermon works not because it's an overt display of religious text, it works because it's a reminder that the holiday originates from a divine savior being born in the worst conditions possible. A reminder that the Christ Christmas is named after was born in the equivalent of a barn, laid to sleep in an animal trough. Where other holiday specials might go on about how it's the most wonderful time of the year, Charlie Brown understands that Christmas can be difficult, that it can be a source of disappointment commercial greed, and seasonal depression, so what makes the holiday special for you is how you adapt to it. To me, it's like the cartoon is saying that Christmas is what you make of it. It's impossible for everything to be perfect, so you have to make each circumstance work for you, and accept whatever you have for what it is. Whether it's a stage play, the most pathetic Christmas tree of all time, or an animated special filled with errors that you're convinced is going to be a disaster. Charles Schultz could have written his comic strip about a popular kid, a delightful menace, or a suburban family, but instead he made it about someone who, from his first named appearance, is actively disliked by the other kids around him. Charlie Brown's whole character is that he's an unpopular, wishy-washy loser who never gets to kick the football, who never wins a baseball game, and never gets any Christmas cards, but that's why we like him. 
He's relatable because we all know what it's like to lose something. Because you don't admire a character for their successes, you admire a character for trying again after they fail. And seeing them lose all the time only makes you want them to win even more. He's the ultimate underdog of comic strips, so I can't think of a more thematically fitting way for a Charlie Brown special to be animated than with rough line work, inconsistent designs, and a final draft that the production team isn't even satisfied with. It's exactly the kind of animated film the protagonist would create and constantly second-guess himself over. This isn't to say that the other Charlie Brown cartoons are somehow terrible. I actually think the polished, smooth animation of the Blue Sky Studios Peanuts movie works just as well for that story, because its theme is about finally giving Charlie Brown his day in the sun. But for a cartoon where the emotional core is the saddest, most pathetic looking Christmas tree of all time, a tree that symbolizes its own production, the humble origins behind Christmas, and Charlie Brown himself as a character, everything ties together to enhance the experience in a way that no one could have ever imagined. A Charlie Brown Christmas isn't the greatest holiday special of all time because we all woke up one day and decided so, it's the greatest holiday special of all time because it's a cartoon about itself. A cartoon about an imperfect character celebrating an imperfect holiday made with imperfect animation. It's within all the flaws and imperfections that we find the true spirit of a Charlie Brown Christmas.